May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Well, I wasn't sure what I wanted to say to you today after the events of last week that we are all reeling from. The violent contempt toward truth is absolutely frightening. The people who committed these insurrectionist acts against our country knew that the unspoken rules that value white lives over black and brown lives would give them cover and the ability to take such actions. The hatred and white supremacy we saw was meant to instill fear and to keep us quiet and in our place. But what was most disheartening was seeing symbols of Christianity or signs claiming love for Jesus on display in the midst of lies and carried by those taking evil actions. The partisan politics that have been mixed with Christianity are not of Jesus. On this day, when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, it is appropriate for us to remind ourselves of the type of life we are called to as followers of Jesus. Our gospel tells us that, if you continue reading, that immediately following his baptism, the Holy Spirit sent Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil, fasted for 40 days, was with the wild animals, and attended to by angels. This should be a sign to us that baptism is much more than a rite of passage for babies. We're re we are reminded that our lives as baptized people, as followers of Jesus, will be filled with difficulty, even as we at are attended to by angels. We did not sign up to an easy life, but a life of discernment and resisting the evil that will challenge the love and life to which we have committed ourselves. Our baptisms not only unite us to God and one another, but we are also empowered by the Holy Spirit and commit to joining Christ in God's creative and redemptive work in the world. The days and really the years ahead will be challenging if we are true to the gospel and the baptism we've undertaken. We are called to seek justice and speak the truth, even when it is uncomfortable. We are called to love, even when it means sacrifice. The love that animates our life will not allow us to be silent so that we can keep an unholy peace. Yes, and I'm really speaking to the church now. <sighs> You know, there is good news in this hard truth because we are not alone and Jesus went through it before us. So I commend to you, if we're going to speak the words that need to be spoken, take the actions that need to be taken, we're going to have to pray. Actually, we're going to have to fast too. We have to study. We're going to have to give and gather together in preparation for the conversations and hard work that we are all called to. Not just leaders or people who have the opportunity to speak in big public places, but you have to start in your families and start in your congregations, at your workplaces. We have not been called to an easy task as followers of Jesus, but we have been gifted uh, to and committed to change the world. That's what we're able to do, which is why as we make or renew our baptismal vows, our response is always, always, I will with God's help. There's no other way. 
And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. With these words of affirmation, God makes it clear who Jesus is. And as we participate in the same act, we are adopted and marked as Christ's own forever. And I wonder what would happen if we each heard the voice of God at our baptism affirming us. You are my son, you are my daughter, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. As sons and daughters of God, how brave would we be? How confident would we be at living our lives as people of faith if all the time when we're going about our ministries that we're hearing, I love you from God. As we begin this time together, this new phase in life, I invite you to live in the confidence of God's love for you. Listen to God's voice saying, you are my son, you are my daughter, the beloved with you, I am well pleased. We will need this encouragement as we live boldly as speakers of the truth who seek justice and build God's beloved community. And every day is the right time to hear God's words of affirmation emboldening you for the future ministry God has in store for all of us, and we are not alone.